Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here and welcome to Mornings with 60 and Me. Today is Tuesday, it's November the 15th. Hope you're all doing really well this morning. Um, it's a beginning of a week and I hope that you found lots of things to keep you um, occupied and you've got some great plans for the week. Um, I am drinking a cup of tea this morning. It's my very simple English breakfast. I'm having a nostalgic morning this morning and I wanted to make that the um, the conversation today and um, go back a little bit back in time and let you also think about your past and uh, you know, share some stories. A lot of you have asked me um, in various conversations to share a little bit about my life, you know, where I came from, where I was born, um, you know, just the story of my life and I thought it might be a good opportunity to do that um, in the context of home, the, the, the idea about what we consider home. I, I don't know about you, but as I've gotten older, I've really started to think more about um, the place that I'm living now. And, you know, is this the place that I want to be? Uh, is, it, is it my home? I'm not living in the country that I was born. And I think that that's one of the things I, I, I think we, well, many of us go through in, as we get older. You know, do we want to be where, um, you know, our, our place of birth? Or are we happy where we've ended up? Most of us probably aren't in the place that we were born, but that's that's a question that I would like to ask. But for me, my story is um, is pretty complicated and probably a little bit like some of yours. Um, I was born in England. I was born in London, in Acton, is which is West London. And uh, when I was eight years old, um, we moved to Canada. A uh, little bit of a long story, but my father had an opportunity. Uh, he had just come out of the war and, um, you know, he, he was looking for a new life. So we emigrated to Canada and we moved to a place in northern Ontario. And I'm, what, I'm seeing women nodding their heads because I know we have so many women in our community who live in uh, uh, Upper Peninsula, Michigan or in, in Ontario or, or Quebec. So um, we've got a lot of uh, women in Canada. So anyway, I lived in North Bay. In a little house opposite the lake, which I like Nipissing, which I'm sure is gone now. <laughs> um, but uh, we lived there for a couple of years, and my dad and mom were a little homesick, so we went back to England um, at one point and then returned uh, because it didn't work out to Toronto. And then I lived in Toronto for several years, <laughs> excuse me, and um, again by the lake. And uh, so I wasn't there too long in, in Toronto, but I do remember uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs and hockey. That was a big thing in <laughs> in, the li in my life where I have two brothers and, and my mom loved hockey too. So anyway, we lived in Toronto and then we kind of made our way um, westward. We ended up in uh, Chatham and then in Windsor and then in Detroit. So I ended up in the United States and I ended up in Detroit when I was um, in my teenage years and I was uh, in high school, my last year of high school. And I went to school in, uh, in Michigan and um, Detroit was in a very tough time at that point. It wasn't during the riots uh, when the city was almost burnt down and uh, I was starting my first job there after I graduated from high school. So it was a pretty dramatic time. Good, good stuff was Motown. I loved the music. I loved the spirit. A great city in many ways still got a lot of character and I lived there for several years. Uh, my mom died when I was in, in Detroit. She was very sick and um, she, she died when she was 50. So that's kind of my my story with my with my mom. And um, anyway, every time we talk about losing losing moms and, and parents, it, it, I I remember that time in my life. And then we, um, when when my mom died, I, I moved on myself by myself to um, to Colorado. And I lived in Colorado for many years, for eight years. Um, I worked in, I went to the university in Boulder, and then I went to uh, Denver and worked there in the bookstore. I was a, I was a bookseller. That was my passion, my my life. And I lived in Denver for a couple of years before going back to the UK. And then I went back to England, back back home, uh, in my thirty, well, early thirties, late twenties, and um, I, I had my two boys. I have two children, two sons now who are, who are grown up, obviously, and uh, the rest is a little bit scattered backwards and forwards. I, I I went back to England, then I came back to the states, worked at Microsoft in Seattle for. Well, almost 20 years and then um, went back to England and uh, you know the story got complicated but anyway I ended up in uh, London and uh, three years ago I moved here to Switzerland so that's my story I kind of look at like this huge circle <laughs> and uh, I'm sure many of you are nodding your heads in agreement because I think a lot of us did this we got moved around a lot and um, it gave us 
strengthen and uh, resilience, but at the same time, we kind of lost track of where home was. And um, I do think that that, that makes a difference. But anyway, that's, uh, that's sort of the story of my life. And I'd love to know a little bit about yours. In fact, that's the question I'd like to ask at the end. So please don't lose that thread of um, the importance of home, where you moved when you were a child and where you're living now. I'd like to know more. But um, when I was telling that story to myself before I started recording, I um, found an article uh, from Detroit uh, where things, have, as you know, I mentioned, got really bad during the 60s and 70s, and then they slowly started to rebuild, and it's taken this long to really kind of regroup. Um, there's a group in Detroit, um, it's a charity group called the Cass Community School Social Services Group, and they are building tiny houses in uh, Detroit. They're taking uh, lots that were abandoned, houses that were, you know, that were um, left, and they're building these uh, tiny houses. And they're planning to make 25 of these uh, single-family homes in the next year. They've uh, just literally just started renting them. That's how I got this news story. I may have even mentioned this before, but anyway, it's it's now they're actually being rented and they're out there in the world. And uh, they're they're the cool thing is they're letting people. Um, uh, rent the property with a, with a goal to buying it. So every rent payment goes towards buying it. And uh, they ha the houses cost about $40,000. Uh, so over um, several years, you're, the person is able to buy their home. And then they'll just keep building more. But um, what's really cool is they're, they're actually fully um, functional homes. They're tiny. They're like 250 to 400 square feet. So they're not big, but they are, um, they're a home and they're in a place, and they're for people who are on a low income or homeless, and uh, it's just an amazing um, you know, in initiative. And the, the CAS is building these uh, houses now in like communities, in streets, so there'll be people like side by side. And I saw a couple of the pictures, and they're really, really cool. And they've already raised um, like $800,000 through private donations to build more houses. So, you know, the tiny house movement is alive and well in Detroit, for sure. And um, I don't know whether any of you in your neighborhoods have uh, seen any um, tiny house communities being built. I just think it's a really nice, interesting idea for people who don't have a lot of money and really just want a roof with, a, you know, a living room, bedroom, kitchen, and uh, maybe a little little garden or a little space for, for plants. And, uh, you know, that they can start a life. They can have a house. They can have a home. So that's, uh, that's our, our feel-good story for today that I wanted to share with you. And then I also wanted to remind you, um, you know, that today, of all days, is I love to write day. And I, I guess in a way it kind of was consistent for me with the nostalgic theme because sometimes we think about writing our life story or writing, um, you know, just the outcome of how our lives turned out. And as I shared with you my story there, you know, it, it was this, there were lots of really cool little things that happened in the middle of all of that. It was a fabulous life, um, you know, and I, I'm very grateful for it, even with the moving. And um, so today is, is you know, I've loved to write day, so maybe it's a time to sit down with a journal or a notepad and just go through your life, you know, start at the beginning and just write even just an outline, a rough outline of the places you lived. Just start there. And, uh, you know, and maybe attach one memory to every place and see where it takes you. I just think it could be really, really fun. And anyway, today as a, as a Do You Love to Write Day is the day, of course, where you celebrate writing as an author. And that could mean a short story or a, a, you know, a poem or something. But um, if, you, if you are a writer out there, this is your day. You can uh, tell everybody that you're not going out today, that you're writing, you're celebrating. <laughs> Well, anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this little walk down memory lane, and I hope that um, it's stimulated some good memories for all of you. I, I, there's goodness in everything that happened in our lives. And I'd like to just thank you for being here, invite you to come back tomorrow, and invite you to bring a friend, bring a friend back tomorrow. Tell them about Mornings with 60 and Me. And, of course, the place to go is 60andme.com forward slash mornings, and just tell them to join us every day. They can get the news first. So again, thanks for being here. And my question for today, 
I guess I wanted to ask you about writing, but I think I'll go back to the question about place. And that is, um, you know, do you do you feel well? First of all, did you live in a lot of places when 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 you were growing up? Did you move around a lot, or did you stay in one house in one city? And how did that impact your life? Be very interesting to know how you how you feel about that. Did you move around a lot, or did you live in one house, one home for most of your childhood? Look forward to reading your, your comments, everyone, and uh, thank you for being so transparent and open sometimes with these questions. It really uh, shows a lot of trust, and I appreciate that. So anyway, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all back here tomorrow on Mornings with 60 and Me. Bye-bye for now.